What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video on the channel. Thought I would uh, make a video because I get asked a lot of questions about my digital dash. So I have the Motec C1212 digital dash which is connected to my Motec M150 and one of the main reasons why I got the dash was to give the R35 GTR a bit of an upgraded look. Uh, obviously having analog clusters in a modern sports car is a bit of a no-go. I'm so used to having digital dashes that it just made sense to get it. Uh, you do get a couple of extra features on a digital dash that you don't obviously with an analog cluster and there's a couple of extra things that you can actually run uh, which you can't do through you know the standard MFD or the standard dash. One of those is uh, fuel pressure sensor so while you can run it on your standard um, ECU with an ECU tech or whatever it may be you can't actually read the or display the pressure sensor output so with a digital dash you can um, Obviously, without a digital dash, you can run it, but you would have to log the data and then review the data after runs to see, um, you know, what your pressures were. Whereas with this, I can see it live on the go. So maybe to start off with, I'll go through and cycle some of what you can see on the dash. Uh, so here is, I guess, the main screen or the basic screen. You've got your speedo reading right in the middle. Uh, you've also got a, just around it, you've got a, a boost pressure reading in KPA uh, and then obviously you've got the rev meter as well which you can see, that's right in the middle. On the left side you've got your fuel trims, intake air temp and fuel temperature and then on the right side is your uh, G meter and you've got your fuel gauge on the right side. So if I press this button here which is just there I don't know if you can see that but just that top button there it'll flip over to the the next screen here which will then show me um, air fuel ratio battery temp oh, sorry not battery temp battery volts and the trans temp and you can see my odometer and trip meters and all of that there um, and obviously the the puck signal is on there at the moment um, and the GMET is still there and I'll, I'll show you how we can change that in a second so if I then press it again it will go to the fuel composition so right now I've only got 9 or 10 percent um, uh, ethanol so that's why it's showing fuel composition 9 uh, then I've got my oil pressure reading which you can see in KPA uh, fuel pressure which is what I talked about just before um, and then you've got your coolant pressure. Now, I don't actually have a coolant pressure sensor in at the moment, and that's why it's maxed out. So, um, anyway, uh, I also forgot to mention over here, it's obviously got your, um, what gear you're in. I'm in park at the moment, obviously being in my garage, hence why it's, it's like that. Okay, now if I press it one more time, um, it's going back to that uh, normal screen. Now, underneath that, there is on here, and you know, it's probably hard to tell, but there's a, like a circle uh, button or a dot button. Now, if I press that one, you'll see what happens. So if I press that once, so now I've got um, engine oil temp on the right side, just over there, and then, uh, sorry, on the left side there of this, this gauge, and then on the right side, I've got the coolant temperature. And that's in degrees Celsius, obviously if you're overseas or you know, in America or using different units or whatever, you can configure it the way that you need to, be, to have it configured. Um, then I press that button one more time. There we go. And I've got the... Um, display for for the tires so I haven't moved the car which is why nothing has registered just yet 
Uh, but when you do move the car, you can actually see the tyre pressures show up on this particular um, part of the screen. So if I press it one more time, I've got a output of the torque and the kilowatts or the power. Uh, I don't know how accurate this is, but I have seen it, you know, at the drag strip, um, read pretty closely to what the engine is putting out. So pretty impressive stuff. Um, anyway, let's press the, that one more time and, and it then goes back to your uh, G meter. So that's, you know, I guess this basic screen right here. Uh, then there's options to change the colors and things like that. So if I press, um, I've got a keypad, which, you know, I think you guys might have seen in a past video, but if I press one of the buttons on the keypad, it'll change the color to like a more bluish um, theme. If I press it one more time, it's it's got a red theme. And then if I press it one more time, I've got the Lambo uh, style dash, which I absolutely love for track racing and stuff like that. And the same principle applies. If you press that button with the dot or the circle on it, it changes the parameters on the left and right side. So if I press it for this particular screen once, oh, sorry, it's actually the button on top of that one. So if I press it for this particular screen once, it'll show um, uh, coolant pressure and fuel pressure. Um, the engine oil temp on this screen, for some reason you can see over there, uh, is not displaying accurately. So I might have to speak to the guy who designed the screen or the the tuners to see if they can get the parameters right. It's meant to read degrees Celsius, but for some reason I've got a feeling it's reading in Fahrenheit. Um, so we'll have to get that looked at. Uh, and if I press that one more time, uh, on the right side you can see my fuel percentage. So uh, just over there, that one there, uh, that's uh, how much percent of fuel I've got left. So right now I've got 45% in the tank, uh, and then you've got your water temp uh, on that side as well. And just above that, you've got your um, ethanol content just there. Mine says E9. Okay, so pressing one more time, and then it's gone back to uh, fuel pressure and water uh, coolant pressure. Okay, so, the other things, obviously, for this one, you've, you've got your RPM gauge, you've got what gear you're in, um, you get your boost display over there. So then if you look on that left side, you've got the engine mode, it's showing four, uh, and you can also see the engine kilowatt and torque that it's putting out. Now, if I press the uh, up and down buttons on the steering wheel, it'll change the mode. So if I go press it twice, it'll go to mode five, uh, mode 6, etc. We only have four modes in this car at the moment. So four is my highest. I've got three, two, one, and zero. Uh, zero is there for a reason. Zero will take me to burnout mode. So uh, I'll show you guys that in a second. But anyway, we'll put it back to, uh, to four. So that's how we're changing the engine or the maps that we've got in the car. Now, everything on the dash works just like factory. So, you know, if I turn off the lights, it will brighten the, the dash. If I turn it on, it will dim it slightly, which you saw there. If I turn on the indicators, oh, sorry, that's not the indicators. You can see that it's gone on. That's the indicators. And then if I do high beam, the high beam's on. Um, so you can see it's working exactly like factory. Now, um, I'll see if I can show you guys cruise control. So I might switch to a different screen just so it's easier to see. We'll put it on that one. So if I press the cruise control on button there, you can see uh, cruise not set. Um, so here, again, cruise control will work just like factory um, and it'll you know, everything's integrated just like factory. So you've got no, no difference other than a digital dash output. So I'll turn that off. But anyway, you can, you've got an idea, it works just like factory. Um, 
what else can you do? Well, you can fully customize this dash. You can make your own designs. So Motec provides a software where you can make your own designs of the dash, the parameters that you want to run. You can get creative and you know put all sorts of different things that you want to rush. It's got so much customization, it's insane. So um, I got it for, for those reasons. You know, I can put as many dash screens as I want. I can run it at the track and have a specific screen for track. I can have a specific screen for drag, uh, circuit, you know, roll racing, whatever it might be. I can set it all up uh, and then change parameters if I want to monitor different things. If I'm testing stuff, I can do you know all, all sorts of different stuff. So uh, it's an awesome bit of kit. So that's the dash. Obviously, I do have a keypad as well. So let's have a look at that. So this is the keypad uh, itself. You don't have to run a keypad, but my personal preference was that I wanted functions on a keypad because I didn't want to have to remember five different button combinations on the steering wheel or things like that. I just wanted to be able to press whatever I needed to press. Sorry, I'll move this out of the way. That's my charging cable. Uh, I just wanted to press whatever I needed to press to get into that mode. So. I spoke about burnout mode before, so what we'll do is I'll show you how, how to get into that. So first things first, let's get back over to the dash and we'll put it in map zero. Okay, so I'm pressing the up and down buttons to get into map zero. So you can see I'm in engine mode four on the top left side. So I'll press it down until it gets to map zero. So that's now map zero and we're gonna switch over to my keypad. So now we need to get into um, traction fully off. To do that, I need to press the traction button there and then press it one more time. Oh, there. So that's traction fully off. And you can see here on the, the dash that um, the traction off uh, symbol has come up. So. Anyway, going back to, to that, I then need to put it into rear wheel drive mode. So we'll press that button and that will take us into uh, the burnout map. So I'll show you what the screen looks like from there. So then our MoTeC uh, dash looks like this in burnout mode. So it's bright blue, so you can't miss it that you are in burnout mode. Um, now, I haven't actually tried this yet. My car's not fully ready uh, to do this. There's a few more things to go before I can get it done. But from what I've heard, once you have um, done your burnout, you actually need to quickly turn off the car and then start again. That's what I've heard uh, because I think there might be an error code that comes up, which is cleared just by restarting the car. So. Um, anyway, this is your burnout mode. That's what the screen looks like. Um, you know, everything is disabled. It's basically a rear wheel drive at the moment and you can go ahead to complete your burnout. So then to turn this off, it's basically uh, get out of two wheel drive mode, uh, put my traction back on, which will, you saw that the traction light went out, and that's MoTeC traction control, by the way, not your standard ECU traction control. And now we need to get it back up into uh, whatever engine mode I prefer to run. So in my case, four, which is the highest map for this car. Um, so yeah, that's it guys. Uh, that's how the MoTeC dash works with the keypad, which I have, that's optional. Obviously you don't have to have it if you don't want it. I wanted it, so that's why I got it. That's my preference. Um, hopefully it's helped answer some of the queries that you guys have had around the dash because I do get a lot of questions about it and a lot of DMs and messages and things about it. So hopefully that's helped some of you guys. Um, I thought it was a fantastic investment to just modernize the look of the car. I love the Lambo dash. Um, it's you know something I run every time I drive the car. Um, so I can't see myself going without it now. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments below. I'll be happy, more than happy to answer. Um, but otherwise, guys, I would really appreciate a like and a subscribe. 
It's going to help my channel grow. I am gonna push out more content. There will be another project car coming as well at some point. So it's just gonna fuel that passion to develop, grow the channel, do more projects, share more videos with you guys, go to more events and all sorts of things. So really appreciate this love and support so far. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.